everyone, and welcome to Think Future. My name is Chris Calabucas, and once again, we're coming to you live from deep, deep, deep in the heart of Silicon Valley, California. We're talking AI, startups, and the future. Not necessarily those, and not necessarily in that order. If you watch on YouTube, smack that subscribe button, hit that bell so you get notified when a new show comes online. And if you're listening on your favorite podcast service, please subscribe and please drop a note on Apple Podcasts. I greatly, greatly appreciate it. Now, over the last couple of days, or last week or so, there's been talk, a lot of talk, about AI pets. Now, I think the problem with AI pets is that we're not going to have AI pets anytime soon. And the reason why we're not going to have AI pets anytime soon is that one of the things that pets provide us with is the emotional support. Even if they're not actually feeling human emotions, we anthropomorphize them. We, we think that they're feeling human emotions. And when you know they come close to us and we cuddle with them and we feel comforted by our pets, AI, I don't think they can do anything like that yet. Now, you've seen in Japan where robotics are really advanced, and they've already got these. Apparently, it's, I forget what it's called, but it's this white, fluffy um, thing, and I'm, I forget what it's called, and acts like a pet, and it's really f- fluffy and squishy, and they've given it to seniors, and, and seniors have responded to that because they, you know, it's, it acts a lot like a pet, like a real pet. It doesn't have the intelligence of an AI pet, but it acts a lot like a pet. And if you think about it, once you get to certain levels of pets, you don't really need an AI to run them. You just need a rules-based system. You know, you do this to the pet, and the pet does this to you. You rub on the pet's belly, and it purrs, right? I mean, there's not a lot going on there. Because if you think about it, you really only need the subset of the pet that will help you emotionally. Do you really need a pet to be able to play catch with? play fetch with? I don't know. I mean, you can see that Boston Dynamics and some of these other robotics companies have done wonders with things that are dog-like, right? I mean, there's even Black Mirror episodes of dog-like robots killing people. Because, of course, that's exactly what dog-like robots are going to do in the future. They're going to kill everyone. That's exactly what's going to happen, right? So I thought to myself, what is it that we want from a pet? What is it we want from an AI pet? We want that emotional connection. We want that comfort. We want to be able to have someone we, we can talk to and be with. And maybe one of the reasons why we prefer pets over humans is because they're easier to deal with than human beings are, right? I mean, dogs and cats, cats maybe not, but dogs will love you unconditionally. And you don't get the same kind of response to humans that you do with, with, with pets, So I think when it comes to AI pets, it's going to be a while before we have AI pets that are actually going to be useful, except except for maybe those specialized cases where we've seen in Japan where they have seniors and those pets that I was talking about just a moment ago. But then at the same time, you have to think about why do you need, what, what is a pet for? Underlying the requirements for a pet, it's for emotional support, right? A lot of times it's for emotional support, it's for companionship. And if you sort of disconnect the companionship from the actual pet itself, then maybe bots, chat bots, chat GPT, Claude, any of the bots that are out there, Replica, any of these bots that are supposed to be sort of emotional helpers, they might actually be perfect for humans. I mean, if you think about it, over the last little while, especially with COVID and all that stuff, we've gotten used to being remote. We've gotten used to not being in the same room with the people we're talking to. We've gotten used to communicating over chat and Zoom and audio, less audio, more like chat and Zoom and more like asynchronous communications, right? I send you a message, eventually you get back to me, da 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 It's not face-to-face as much as it used to be. So swapping a human in or swapping an AI in to be your confidant, to be someone you can, you can talk to at any time of the day or night and help you through tough emotional issues, maybe that's where we should be going. Maybe we should be encouraging more communication between humans and AI. Now, if you ask me, that might be a road that we don't want to go too far down because we might see all sorts of individuals going, you know what, forget it, I'm done with the human race. I'm done with humans. 
I don't want to interact with humans any longer. I only want to recede into my world of interacting with bots. And if you think about it, there are whole subcultures now, especially the neat subculture in Japan and this type of culture, which is coming to the United States and other places. N neat stands for not in education, employment or training. So basically someone who sits around the house doing nothing, making nothing and consuming. They consume all the time. They consume uh, video games, they consume manga, they consume TV, videos, whatever, but they don't ever actually work. They don't contribute. And if you think about it, one of the reasons why we can have this type of underclass is because, I'm not sure if I, I, maybe underclass is the wrong word, I apologize, have this type of class is because you've got so much wealth being able to support individuals like this. Because they wouldn't be able to support themselves, so they are supported in some way. But if they're getting their emotional support from AI, then what do they need humans for? What kind of society are we building where we have these individuals who are not contributing to society, they're only consuming, and then they latch on to their emotional connections are with AI and not with other human beings. How is this person going to grow? Well, it all depends on the AI, right? I mean, if the AI is a generative AI of the type that we've seen today that isn't built to assist humans to aspire to greater things, to do greater things, then these individuals will probably stay exactly where they are. But if we somehow take AI and turn it into a tool to help people to understand their aspirations, to step out of that world, to connect with other actual human beings, to be in the present, to work, to create, they don't necessarily need to go work at the nearest subway or whatever, or, 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 or pizza joint or in and out burger, maybe they can create on X or Facebook or, or YouTube. Maybe they can do videos. Maybe they can, I mean, I think every human being has the capacity to create, to entertain. So it's entirely possible that all these individuals who are consuming, if we provide them with the right platform to be able to create and present themselves to the world, maybe that's the way to pull these individuals into the rest of humanity. Get them to start creating and putting their stuff out there and using AI as a helpful friend who can help them to get their stuff out there and then eventually somehow monetize it. We can use, and I seem, I feel like I'm a I'm broken record on this. We can use AI for good or we can use it for evil. We can use it to keep people stuck in their homes, being neats and not interacting with humanity and not doing things to improve humanity. Or we can use it to help those individuals crack out of their shells and become contributors to the human race, to make humanity better. Because if you ask me, that is the reason why we're all here. That is the reason why we're doing all that we're doing. Everything that I'm doing, everything that you're doing, everything that we're all doing, should be for the betterment of all of humanity. At least that's my feeling. And if we could take AI and use it to help humans be better at themselves, as well as better human at, at better at helping humanity, then I think that's a win all around. That's it for me for today. See you next time, and until then, don't forget to think future.